Blessed be the Lord and blessed are you that are tuning in, you are clicking on your phone and your computer to listen to these words. Blessed are you. I know that increase of life that happens in this season is going to be not equal by anything else that you experienced before. Not because the Lord is speaking through me and you happen to listen or like this, but because of a Father that loves you. Yes, our Father loves you. As you look into the string of years of your life, and if you see or hear the story as it's told by the Lord, now the book, the the books that are written by him <laughs> the lamb's book of life it's your life too and it reads so differently than the world or the outside circumstances look like and you know when you feel the destiny and you feel like, yes, I know why I'm alive. I found my purpose in life. When whatever you see on the outside intersects the destiny of the Lamb's book of life. How he sees your life. How he writes that book. At those intersections you know that there is something more than what you see every day and the temporary even successes of a daily life it's way more it's started from him it's through him your life and it's for him hallelujah Thank you, Father, for giving us your perspective for our lives here. Praise you, Father. It's so powerful. And yes, listening or um, going through these first few verses where the Apostle identifies himself as he writes the letters, the epistles, and frames what he wants to say, that gives you a glimpse at least of where Apostle Paul was living in the realm of life he was speaking from. And as you are more aware of that, things will start to become alive even for you. Your words are not going to be opinions, ideas, the mind-brain type of things coming from the tree of knowledge, arguments, reasonings. No! Your words are going to become living thoughts revelations that you just get and they flow through you and you hear yourself talking <laughs> you hear that revelation prime time and the first time as he gives it through your mouth and your soul is the first receiver that's so blessed and watered by the life coming from the Spirit. It's exciting, isn't it? We are at 2 Timothy and um, we introduce a couple of elements there. We introduce this relationship in the ministry where the Apostle allowed another soul 
uh, his Timo this Timothy to connect with his soul in a very special way. Think about the Apostle Paul didn't have a family as far as wife and kids and the body of Christ was his family. So he had a big family actually. <laughs> but there were few that were very close to him. So close that about Timothy, he calls him his son, son in faith, beloved son. So he introduced that and also he talked about mercy. So here comes Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1, Paul an ambassador of Christ Jesus. He uses this a lot, ambassador of Christ Jesus through the will of God. Remember in the first Timothy we said through the command. It's still the same realm because we so much diminished the understanding of kingdom of God. It's like something that um, it's like a kingdom of man it's a very democratic organization where people have a voice and uh, can do this or they have a choice to do that but see he didn't say this is the republic or the democratic country of god no it says kingdom of god and it has a special meaning that's the place where there is only one will. That's the will of God. It's the place where the will of God is alive in everyone. That's why it's not yet in the world. But in us, and it takes room it makes room it grows inside us as we are understanding this theocracy this place where god is the ruler <laughs> and your soul learns to follow in order there is an order he says, Apostle Paul says here, I'm an ambassador according to the will of God. And this is something that creates a position of authority in what I'm saying. This is what he means. He doesn't want you to say, well, the will of God for me was to be a minister. Maybe the will of God for you is to be an engineer um, or a regular Christian. But no, 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 no. No, he talks about this is the position, the will of God, the command of a living God created this realm of authority that I'm speaking to you to, from. You better listen, <laughs> because in this realm there is only one will, it's His will. So you want to live in this realm, you merge, you submit to His will. And then he continues, and according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus the promise of life see the realm of the kingdom and the realm of life in christ of course it's it's one god it's unity but he presents this as two different realms because the realm of life in christ is a realm of inheritance of co-working with him, co-laboring with him, of sharing the inheritance with 
the Son of God, Jesus, as sons, we co-inherit the realm of life. The promise of life is our inheritance in Christ Jesus. The other realm, <laughs> I don't think it's a realm of sharing. <laughs> It is the realm of the kingdom of God. Period. Do you see that? To make it clear, it comes to mind 1 Corinthians 15 when he says, God made all things to be under the feet of the Son, under the feet of Christ. But when he says this, and it's interesting how the Apostle explains the concept of kingdom. When he says this, it of course it excludes the one that made all things to be under his feet. Because when everything is going to be submitted and subject to the Son, even the Son will take this and submit to the Father. Do you see the concept of kingdom? How clearly he shows there is only one line. <laughs> it doesn't say, hey, and, and the son is the kingdom and then he'll share and bring his dad into the kingdom and they'll call co king. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He, the Son Himself, will submit to the Father. So there are different, different concepts, different understanding, and that's why I'm, I'm very uh, careful when uh, people talk about kingdom now and kingdom understanding and taking over the world and moving the money into the kingdom of God. And these are much too, too superficially used words if you really understand what the kingdom of God is because it takes the son himself to absolutely submit to the father so that kingdom concept would actually work the will of God and the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus this is with all the aspect and diversity and how we serve how we bless how the body of Christ grows through what every joint supplies and this is the life in Christ Jesus I think this is what we talk more about because there is submission, there is obedience, there is a growth, but all of us are part of the same body. Right? There's not one member that's the boss of another member, right? We are in Christ together. And the concept of kingdom, which is a very important concept but I see very little uh, it's very little understood in lots of these uh, explanations of uh, the kingdom of God that I hear so absolute will of God the absolute authority of the words of the scripture that Apostle Paul from the will of God declared and spoken to us we take them exactly like that and then he writes to Timothy beloved child and the word child there and I think King James says beloved son but the word is uh, the technon, which is basically small children, um, adult, 
adult children or adult son is uh, huyos. But technon is uh, small, maybe toddlers. So we translate child, not necessarily a son, but this is this is the relationship as this um, growing son of God, absolutely son in the spirit, was learning in his soul from this more mature son of God, which is the Apostle Paul. And they had this special connection, at least for a season, at least for a while. And Timothy continued afterwards. Grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Grace, and he gets there, mercy. I think when he talks to Timothy, he uses that, and I think Titus also. But it's very um, few times in the way he presents, um, he identifies himself, that the apostle comes and also brings mercy in the place. And maybe, yes, if you deal with children, mercy is very welcome. Because <laughs> grace and righteousness sometimes can be kind of rough <laughs> on children. <laughs> um, and peace, yes, it's a very amazing protection and guardian. But mercy is very useful because mercy overcomes judgment. Very important to deal with lots of mercy. See the other one covered, sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. Don't hold on to any type of anger, self-righteousness. Even if you are right, <laughs> if you really want to impact and help others grow to know the Lord in the place that you are with the Lord, mercy is a requirement. Um, otherwise, uh, probably you'll put all kind of barriers. People would not, it would be hard to come close to you to know who you really are. And it's not quite their fault. <laughs> I'm just saying to um, make friends with mercy. If you have people around you that are drawing life and they look up and they want to grow, make friends with mercy. Ask Ask the Lord about the mercy seat. Ask what's happening from those two cherubs that are on the top of the mercy seat. How authority flows through mercy. And that's going to be so good. Blessed. We'll talk more. <laughs>